Now, we're not going to bring you sports on this Friday morning right now. What we are going to be bringing you is a, a press briefing that how many gold is holding right now uh, with regards to that tragedy that has struck at the Kusasa Letu mine. Let's go there now, live. One death out of fatality or the loss of life of any employee is one loss of life too many. Now, if we keep saying that, and there isn't a meaningful, fundamental change in the, the injuries that take place on the mining industry. Uh, a lot of our statements lose that, uh, uh, that authenticity. And I was saying uh, in the earlier meeting, in the earlier meeting that uh, it is difficult to look at these families in the eye. It's one of the most painful and one of the most uh, emotionally devastating experience to have to look at uh, a family in their eyes and say that, uh, yes, there was a seismic event, and uh, yes, you know, we are not just complying with the law because we, we all support the, the investigation totally. But the bottom line is these people, these workers, lost their lives on our, on our mind, on, on our premises where we have to take the responsibility, irrespective of what comes out of the out of the investigation. The families have entrusted the workers to us, and we are accountable to them. So uh, the minister and I, as I said, went to visit the families. And uh, it's a very painful, extremely painful uh, and sad experience for them. But of course, uh, this industry was built by poor workers, in fact, workers who built the South African industry as well as the, the whole of the economy. So we have a duty to provide jobs, but we have an even greater duty to make sure that uh, the obligation of creating a safe and healthy environment never, never, never stops. So what I want to say in conclusion is that uh, uh, we have been so grateful by the cooperation as well as the support of the minister, the ministry, the leadership of the workers, and also thank the proto teams. You know, if you want to see black and white in South Africa, working hard together in, the, in a united effort, as has happened when our own proto-teams were trying to uh, save the lives as best they could, and as well bring out those families when they did. I mean, those, those workers that we lost. So we just want to say in conclusion that uh, we will do everything possible to work together with the investigation and uh, we have a, a never-ending obligation to never stop trying to create the safest and the, the most healthy environment. Workers should not come to the mines to lose their lives. It's unacceptable. Totally, totally unacceptable. And as I said, we have to take that. We are responsible in the sense that they come to us and we are accountable. And of course, whatever will come out of that, uh, that hearing will never change the, the responsibility we have. It's, it's not the responsibility of the workers. It's our responsibility in the first place. And, and we are committed to keep making a humble contribution. I think there'll be other announcements concerning uh, uh, the memorial but uh, there was a good point that was raised by the leadership of the workers to say that 
you know, we should not just, as is the culture, replace, provide a job to a family because uh, a worker has lost his life. We should do much, much more. And, and the suggestion from uh, the leadership of AMCU and the workers to say that, as well as NUM, to say that we should uh, educate the youngest at the time up to tertiary level is something that, uh, Peter, we have to look at very, very seriously and, uh, and try and help as best we can. I, I just want to conclude by saying thank you so much, Minister, and thank you for the support, the condolences, but also for the message you gave. And uh, there will always be challenges, but we must emphatically recommit ourselves to uh, making sure that our people do not lose their lives at the mines. It's totally unacceptable. Thank you, Minister. <clears throat> well, um, let me start first by thanking everybody who has spent the past seven days here in this mine. We also ourselves have been here, and uh, it is actually unparalleled to see unions, management, um, the proto team working together the way they did, without really blaming each other. We, <clears throat> we want to thank everybody, including the chair, uh, Mr. Mtsipe. You're actually the first one to take responsibility since I became the minister and uh, be here yourself. Go visit the families, look them in the eyes, and console them. I hope other mine bosses will see this as very important. This must be a turning point when it comes to issues of safety. This year alone, I think I've visited more than 45 families because every incident I do go and look the family in the eyes. So the issue of the safety should be reaching a turning point as we speak today. Earlier on, we have agreed with the workers here that we will go back and consult everybody, but we will begin to be tough in terms of exercising our powers in regulating this issue. We, we cannot talk forever. I think action must, must follow, and as we act, we believe South Africans will support us because these workers come here with the view of supporting their families and going back to their families alive, not going back when they are dead. And if they do go back dead, it must not be an, a normal thing. Uh, we as government, the unions, the mines themselves, bosses, must actually take example from what the chair said. We are going to have a report. I have said to my inspectors, leave no stone and stone and tent because we want to go to the bottom of all these incidents that has happened and we'll make that public we are grateful that uh, the the chairman here and everybody is working together with us to ensure that this industry 
is one of the safest. I believe we can do that. If we become serious, we all do what we are supposed to do, whether be workers, management, the DMR, we should just carry what we need to do and ensure that our workers are safe. <clears throat> Until we create bosses coming from workers in the mining industry, we'll have not fulfilled our duty as government. He's saying <coughs> what he's saying because he has graduated through this industry. He understands the pain of a family losing a breadwinner. We need to create more of those so that we fight this. But we want to thank you, Chair, AMCO, NUM, and everybody, the department, for ensuring that all the deceased are recovered. We have just said we will come when everybody has been recovered, but the team has been here 24-7. So we've been getting reports. We didn't just want to come during the first day because the media would have then came here and defocused us from doing the real job of recovering the bodies that needed to be recovered. And now that that has happened, we will go back and do our work. We are prepared to work <coughs> with you, the unions and everybody, to make the industry the safest, to ensure that the smallest child at home is not only assisted by the mind, but happens to interact with their father. Because nobody can replace, no amount of money or warmth can replace a human being, can replace a father, can replace a mother. I think that we must get clear. If somebody is going to replace the brother here, it does not mean that scar is closed. That scar will live forever with the family, with the children. They will forever say, my father died at the mine. And as leaders seated here, it is our duty to stand up and say to all our minds and the bosses, this far no further. That's what we want to say. And thank you. Thank you, Minister. I think before we open the floor for questions, let's just uh, welcome and introduce to you Penigo Kediaba Sebens, Mr. Dumisa Mashalena. Welcome, Governor. Okay. Thank you, I think what we are going to do in the interest of time is to open the floor for questions. Um, just perhaps as a, as a maybe I'll allow the comrades to say something. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> should, should we move it? Eh? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you and uh, good morning. Um, firstly, our heartfelt condolences um, to the families um, who have lost their loved ones uh, in this incident. We're saying, um, thank you uh, to the proto teams uh, for the effort and the unparalleled effort that they put into this operation. Thank you to the colleagues of the deceased workers who also worked tirelessly uh, assisting the proto teams. We would also like to thank uh, management and all the other colleagues uh, from various unions that were here giving their support 
um, in every way that um, they could. Um, the killings in the mining industry have come to a tipping point. Not so long ago, we were up the road at Daulegua, where a similar seismic incident took place, and we lost three colleagues. Hardly a month later, we've lost five colleagues um, at Kusasalit. It would be a sad day if the next time we invite the members of this media, more colleagues have been killed in the neighboring mine. This should be the last of it. We want to put a challenge to DMR that the inquiries into these um, accidents need to be expedited. The current reality is it takes year, two years, up to three years before the inquiry even sits, <coughs> let alone the findings of the inquiry. By the time the inquiry sits, some of the witnesses can scarcely even remember what had transpired. Some of the witnesses have left employment and cannot be found, and this does not assist the process. We want DMR to expedite this process. We are not saying that this incident should be given more priority than others, but if you look at the number of people that have lost their lives just in the past month through these incidents in the mine, it really raises an eyebrow and it makes sense why the inquiries needs to be expedited. But also on top of that, we need to see the results, the findings of these inquiries. We need to see people being held accountable for the deaths in the mining industry. More often than not, it is the workers, it is the shift bosses, it is the miners that get used as scapegoats after these incidences. We hardly ever see senior executives being held to account. We want to see this happening. If this is not done, then these inquiries serve no purpose at all, and these killings will continue to take place. I also want to reiterate what I've said to the minister and the captains of uh, this company, that the replacement of a deceased worker by a next of kin does nothing but to create an impression that people are a commodity that can be replaced, that can be dispensed with. That should not be the attitude. These are human beings, these are mothers, these are fathers, these are sons and daughters. We cannot be burying them every single day, especially for accidents that could have been prevented. So we would like to see action being taken sooner than later. I thank you. Okay, do you want to come to the side? Well, we can just, just move it there. We can just move it there. No. Chairperson, thank you very much for this opportunity to say, to say something on behalf of NWM. I think our colleague have said a, mount, uh, a, mount, a mouthful of words here. But our, our, the first thing from NUM is to, is to send condolences to, to the Pirip families. It, you know, we have been here since the, 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 the incident happened last Friday. It was tiring, but we also appreciate, we must appreciate the cooperation between ourselves management, the stakeholders, workers, the, the inspectors, we are very much, a, 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 we really appreciate the contribution that they have given. At, at times we had to come with suggestions from NUM to say, what if we, we take this direction? They were also t t taking every, every advice from ourselves into consideration. 
And we also want to thank the, the, our colleagues, all unions, irrespective of which union. We had a good cooperation because we always believe that even if we have got differences, but when we have got incidents of, of this nature, we, we, we must normally put it aside and concentrate what have happened to all of us. And we also appreciate the fact that at this stage, nobody has stood up to say we are playing who we are playing, which we believe it is not the right time. There will be time where investigations will be done. And even then, we believe going forward, it will, be, it will be a question of saying, we understand this has happened. It will be a question of saying, we understand this, is, this has happened. How then do we move forward? Because primarily our, our focus was to, was to have these, these colleagues accounted for. And we want to say thank you very much to, to the proto team because they also take our advice as well, of which we really appreciate. And we, 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 we believe that what we have done at Kusasaletu must not end here. Whenever there is an incident of this nature, cooperation is very much important because blaming each other is in, in, in actual fact is not going to assist the industry, it is not going to assist us. But when there are issues, irrespective of how tense they are, it is very much important that we sit around the table and discuss and find solu solutions than going outside, shouting to each other. You know, I don't think it will be the best interest of us as organized labor and, and the people we represent. But we also appreciate the chairman for coming and the minister, thank you very much. And the CEO and his team, thank you very much. And we, we really had a good, good cooperation until yesterday when these, these, these colleagues were, were encountered for. In terms of going forward, as we have indicated from many, we are going to, to, to we are not going to preempt whatsoever have happened until the investigation is done. And once the investigation is done, everything is brought to, 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 to the table, we'll be able to sit down and manage it. Where did we go on? Because it's important. You know, we must also indicate that it, it took us by surprise because if you look at harmony, we were at a stage where we were saying, in, in terms of safety, what we are, we are doing right. It just, have, it just happened. You look at the record itself. We, were, we thought we are doing everything right, but unfortunately this incident came. But what is it that it's saying to us? It said, let us go back. Because it's just like a team, when it is winning, sometimes you, you, you become complacent and say, no, things are rosy. But when a team loses, it is, def it is then when you could say, let us do something. I think this is what all of us must do, not blaming. It is our industry, we we'll always have this, but it is also important that when there is something that we must discuss, we must discuss and it as a team and ensure that it does not happen. With those ways, thank you very much, Jefferson. Let's just start off by set of, uh, three questions. I always say no long preambles that end up confusing the respondents or the people that you're talking to just as they say in Africa and Scott and so mm -hmm. they say straight to the point and just indicate who the question is directed at and just fire the question. In bundles of three if you may. Uh, also introduce yourself please. There's the first hand there. Another hand. Okay, but it's a tattoo system. Hi, I'm Nisha from News 24. This is Director of Mr. Aswani. Um, you said that you believe that this industry can become one of the safest um, and that you're looking to implement tougher exercising of power and regulating safety issues. Do you have particular <coughs> plans that you plan to implement and in order to ensure that this carries through? <laughs> Let's take you. Uh, my name is Kel Mono. I work with Ian and Seven. My question is directed to Minister as well. 
Minister, you said this incident should be a turning point and that you are going to be tough after this. As Mr. Samile from AMPU said, suggested that you know senior executives should be held responsible for this incident. Can you give us a surety that uh, executives will be held responsible with whatever investigations will come out after um, the chief inspectors, whatever the report they will give you? And also, when will minister as well as other officials stop saying that this should be a turning point? Because we've seen the other day also I asked this question to one of the officials. Because every time an incident like this takes place, we see ministers and officials coming and saying, this should be a turning point. It's not the first, and surely it will not be the last. Yeah. Any other taker before we allow minister to respond? I think that's responding, minister. <coughs> Well, we must acknowledge the fact that uh, we we are hands-on. Since we came here, every incident we come, we want to know what has happened. And we make follow-ups, which is what has not been happening in the past. We all have adopted a zero harm strategy, including the industry. At some point, there was a cry even from you, members of the media, as we were implementing Section 54. You came crying and saying, hey, economy is going down. It means if we all have to reach this turning point, we must work together, all of us. Uh, media, companies, <coughs> unions, DMR, we must all work together to turn this tide. The chairperson of this mine is here with us, and he has said uh, himself that they are willing to cooperate with whatever the report will be saying. And we must acknowledge that that is also unparalleled. We do not wish to sketch a scenario of knowing who are the culprits. But we can tell you that whatever outcome of the report will be followed without any fear. Anyway, we have never shown fear as DMR dealing with issues. So we'll continue dealing with, with these issues. So every time when there is a deceased, we repeat the message. Because we can't stop repeating the message. And we go back and check what has happened, and we act. I'm sure as we talk, that section is closed. It's an action that we have all agreed that this is not safe, let's close. And uh, I have also spoken with my inspectors that uh, I need more reports. <coughs> if there were reports previously, in that section, we must see what has the management done to remedy that situation. And we'll take it from there. So what I can tell you, and you'll agree with us, once the DM, DMR says this is going to happen, it's going to happen. We have laws and regulations. We will go back and consult so that tomorrow you don't say we have not consulted with stakeholders. Um, the first stakeholder is here is agreeing with us. The second one is here, AMCO, is agreeing with us. And the third stakeholder is there, is also agreeing with us. We'll rope others because we don't have a wisdom, the monopoly of wisdom as the department alone. But what we are sure of 
is the stance that we all agree on, that this should be a turning point. Five people did all, all at the same time. I'm not saying one is not important. Uh, we'll go back and bring heads together. If you wish, we'll also invite you for your own contribution. I think, I think I've answered what you have, you have asked me. <coughs> Okay, I just wanted to ask, uh, based on the two ladies' questions, because I'm not answered, um, just in terms of what are you going to do differently? Maybe that's, that's, that's what I wanted, uh, my colleagues wanted to know. Um, and uh, we appreciate your answer, which is very generic, but maybe you can help us with you know, a detailed explanation of what will be done differently this time. We will, we will come back and implement section 54 and all other sections that are there that you in the previous occurrences you complained about we'll implement them you must just come join us support us because you have a tendency when we we do things you forget that you ask us these questions what are we going to do we will implement the laws that we have without moving. We'll also talk, engage, because that is very important. And hear from the workers themselves, because they are the ones that are there um, under the ground and the management and the bosses. We will have a campaign that we will launch after engaging everybody. Safety campaign, Masipepe, because we want to make this industry the safest. Uh, there will be challenges, but that is our target. I hope I, I was direct. Uh, just with your permission, I just want, I'm, because th this is a very important question, you know, in terms of, uh, I mean, and, and from a, a mining management perspective. What should we do differently? Now, I want to tell you something important. Uh, when we had a, because this is seismic, and seismic means it's an earth tremor. And uh, we have had to ask ourselves, you know, as I said, we own 15% of harmony through uh, African rainbow minerals. And we had to ask ourselves, do we close these mines? Because it is unacceptable. Or do we walk out of the industry? I mean, this man has got five years left. And the people who lost their lives did so more than three kilometers below the surface. This is deep level mining. And uh, the issue arose, but if you guys leave, it would be a a betrayal of the obligations we have to provide jobs in this industry. But jobs in this industry that leads to loss of life is no jobs at all. The laws as they stand were there to make sure that, and they're amongst, you know, we compare legislation, Minister and Inspector of Mines. We do mining in various other parts of the world. In terms of ensuring that the safety and health environment, this is, is as good as you get in the world, and in some regards even uh, much, much better than many of the developing countries. But we also have to be honest. Deep level mining, the challenge that as a South African mining industry, at some stage we're going to have to confront ourselves with is... Uh, what does the future of deep level mining look like? And, and I can say to you, we will close those mines. It doesn't matter 
how much resources we've put in, if it is unsafe and we feel that the health of our workers are, are in, are at, uh, the safety and health of our workers are at stake, we will close them. But as I say as well, you know, we need to engage with the stakeholders because uh, I just want to say one final thing. Uh, a few years ago, when we were closing one mine, uh, and we had a discussion with various stakeholders, and one of the leaders of the workers stood up and said, you know, uh, Comrade Patrice, you have to live in the real world. I bet that I thought. So I said, what do you mean? He says, you know, uh, <clears throat> there are many industries. If you drive on the road, you can get injured. Many jobs are by nature, despite best practices, there are injuries. So in your obligation and your duty to say that the minds, and, and also complying with the law, to say that the minds which are not safe must be closed, take into account that that's a betrayal. It's a betrayal of me, uh, the workers who have worked for this company, and also a broader betrayal of the industry. So <clears throat> the right thing going forward is we have to continue to engage. And we've got to keep on committing ourselves to best practices. Uh, Minister, we've had so many of our minds closed. And sometimes, sometimes closed for an absolutely minor transgression to bring the mind to a standstill. And management, when they come and explain, I mean, we've got a mine that employs 5,000 people, a platinum mine, which is not as, yeah, the risks are not the same because this is deep level mining. And the department issued Section 55s, several. And the, the people on the mine were even scared to come and report because our starting point is, why do they issue the Section 55? It's, you are to blame. We are to blame. So it is, and it's unacceptable. So I'm just saying that, you know, uh, you asked a very important question, uh, my good friend here. And, and again, we don't want to meet here next time and say this is another turning point. I mean, the, the pain and the commitment is, is what should take us forward and try and make this industry as safe as the minister has said, as safe as we can. It's for our children and, and for all stakeholders. This is Simon Halani from NPL. I just want to clear with the minister in terms of the time frames uh, concerning the report. Um, so. <coughs> Well, it always depends on the difficulty we come across. For, for an example, this is not going to be one of the easy ones. Three kilometers, seismic, where did it start, what is the cause, and all those issues. What we have been doing is to say to the management report us in terms of how far you have moved and uh, so that we have a sense as soon as they are done we will be able to share with you uh, for an example we have been pushing them to finish the lily mine investigation and it took more than a year because you need also to put legal minds together because once the report is there it must be implemented so we want a credible report and uh, it's not entirely in our hands Um, do you think uh, people have been getting away or mine bosses have been getting away 
um, with not complying? Um, and if so, why have we waited so long to do this? Because these are people's lives. Well, Humuzo, the chair has just said we have closed a number of his minds, and he's right. So it means we have not waited. I was just saying at, at a particular point, as we're escalating, even the media started saying, we think DMR is not doing the right job. Because we we normally alert the management in terms of what is discovered in the mines that should be fixed before we go to Section 54. And if you go to any mine, they will tell you that we have been there. Uh, that's uh, Minister, Mining Minister Mosebenze Zwane speaking after the accident at Harmony Gold Kusasa led to mine. Uh, that's on Gauteng's West Rand. And you can imagine the horror underground uh, seismic event occurring last Friday. And we've been following the rescue efforts. Unfortunately, uh, five miners were trapped after a rock fall and none of them were brought up alive. Eventually, five bodies were discovered. And, and really soul searching on behalf of the mining industry, uh, Patrice Matsepe, saying that they need to take responsibility. Uh, he from uh, uh, African Rainbow Minerals uh, that has a 15% stake in Harmony. And just talking about the options, do you close the mines, do you walk away uh, when jobs are also needed, uh, but saying that the jobs mean nothing if, if people lose their lives. The unions there as well demanding accountability, uh, saying that they will follow what is done because mine workers cannot be treated like commodities. Uh, their lives are very important. And of course, uh, Zwane himself saying that the media complains and mines complain about Section 54, which I think relates to safety stock Stoppages. So whenever there's a safety concern, uh, we see mines being closed. Sometimes for days they've complained that that really hampers their economic activity, their ability to make profits. Uh, so, so really mine surfing, uh, uh, soul searching rather, what has to be done in the wake of this horrific accident. Now